Here we can see a comparison of Sleeper Agent Swiss Mr. Huber 1 and Sleeper Agent Swiss Mr. Huber 2 who changed their names into Hoover. So when in 1923 the Swiss started to finance Adolf Hitler in Zurich by their agent from Octogon, General Ulrich Wille, they activated all their sleeper agents for the motherland, Switzerland. One year later, Swiss Mr. Huber I became the director of the FBI for the next 50 years or half a century from 1924 until 1972, who took care of all the Hitler sightings in Argentina at the Colonia Suiza after the war and had them disappear from public at some federal bureau without investigation. And he had the best US president, JFK. Five years later, the other Swiss Mr. Huber, too, got US president enabling the biggest robbery in 1929 to get uh, the money into the motherland Switzerland. So by then there were two Swiss Hubers at the mightiest key positions together with Swiss General Eisenhower setting in place the course of World War II. Just watch in Google, list of Swiss Americans and Swiss American. Look how the Hubers look alike, certainly being of the same breed from Octagon of the Alps. The same nose, same facial expression, same brachycephalic skull form, etc. And as all charming things come in three, there was a third Swiss Mr. Huber. Albert Friedrich Armin Huber whose mother knew Mussolini when Mussolini was in Bern, Switzerland. Yes, they all were in Switzerland, weren't they now? So here you can read about the third Mr. Huber. Charming people. And this third Swiss Mr. Huber became one of the Swiss Nazi bankers for the Islamofascism related to the Palestinian SS mass murderer Amin al-Husseini, who was a personal friend of Adolf Hitler and spiritual father of Yasser Arafat, and responsible for the murder on hundreds of thousands of Serbs, Gypsies and Jews by the Muslim Hanjar SS division, who were doing the holy war jihad in the name of Hitler in Europe, in the Balkans. You can read it yourself, just punch pause about the Swiss involvement in wars and stirring up people against each other. What a charming people, eh? And here you can read it in German, it's only in German in Wikipedia uh, for the ones who are able to read German. Just punch pause. So these are the type of people Swiss Mr. Huber number three liked and therefore even converted to Islam getting the name of Ahmed Abdallah Ramadan al Swissri. Sounds like Swissy, doesn't it? Or just Ahmed Huber. This was an extremely dangerous man who just converted to Islam for good Swiss business and his own personal fascist Swiss hatred towards uh, humanity. I've told you, the Swiss Octogon are the real puppet masters and great eminence behind the screens. And the entire Swiss population fosters these extreme right-wing Nazi fascist ideologies and will give it their full support. So this here is out of a, um, out of a website and he was part of a, uh, of a Swiss Nazi organization. Um, I'll show it to you here. These are some members who... Uh, so this is called uh, the Avalon Gemeinschaft. Avalon community. A very scary thing where Swiss Nazis 
collaborate together with uh, with fascist Muslims. I don't say all Muslims are fascist, by the way. There are quite a few good Muslims as well. So, this is Avalon. It's just around the corner, it's just a few kilometers from here where I am. And I had to do with these extremely dangerous people. Who walk in and out of the Swiss Parliament. Now I fully understand why in 2002 six Nazis forced themselves into our house in Hindelbank and why the sixth Nazi was an Arab. Because Mr. Huber's Islamo-Fascist Avalon Gemeinschaft community is just around the corner a few kilometers away in Kirchberg, the next village with a letterbox in Efliger. Here you can see it's in Efliger. And we were living just around the corner when this happened. So I wrote this, what happened that day, uh, 12 years ago. I sent, it, I sent thousands of letters to Swiss politicians and Swiss people asking for help. And uh, the only thing what happened is they, uh, they put me in prison. And they forced me in front of a psychiatrist, Mr. Kurt Kunz, a pal of the, of the Swiss Nazi judge, Mr. Vicari. And they said, well, I'm crazy. You, know, you can see here, we were living just a couple of kilometers away from this, uh, this Mr. Swiss Huber, a very dangerous guy. Um, and, and, and this is the reason for that the six men was, a, uh, was an Arab. I, I, I never understood it until now. But uh, these guys all protected by the entire Swiss population. And when Mr. Huber died, num the Huber number three in 2008 in Muri, he surely knew Muri's pedophile Ernst Stoller whom I sent into hospital and saving two children out of his hands that day. Now I fully understand why it was me who got sentenced to one year in prison and not the Swiss pedophile. The child molester knew Mr. Huber, the Nazi. Both in Muri and Mr. Swiss Huber III must have known the SVP Nazi Judge Jean-Pierre Vigari, who sentenced me to prison and not his pedophile pal and not even looking at the witness accounts of Tom Warner from New York. I happen to be at the wrong moment at the wrong time. So this is how I got in touch like with these Swiss Nazis. So I send this to thousands of Swiss. Yeah, Mr. Tom Warner. So Tom, if you see this, contact me. I tell you, he was there. I recognize him. Ahmed al Swissri Huber. He was there when, when these six men, they came into our house and threatened me. I was with my first son, who was only a few months old at the time, was still a baby. There wasn't absolutely nothing I could do. And so we left the home. We went to France. We escaped for two years to France. When I came back, they tortured me. With code O to T, they dragged me in front of a psychiatrist saying that I'm crazy. And um, they've been threatening me ever since and tell me to shut up. But I won't shut up, I've got YouTube now. This was the man, he was one of the six men together with one Arab. And I understand it all now. Why me and my family, we all had to suffer. Uh, this is Switzerland, and they all get backed up by, by the entire Swiss population, I tell you. It's not only the Swiss People's Party, it is the entire Swiss population. They're all a bunch of Nazis, I tell you. You hear me, Swissies? It's not Al Swissri, it's Al Swissi, eh? But I won't forget it. 
This is how things get done in silent, invisible ways in Nazi Switzerland. And this is why it needs the NSA to shine light in this darkness and the highly criminal Swiss banks, to which the traitor Snowden was assigned to do in Geneva. Switzerland and their Templar Octagon organization are the brain behind Nazism, Fascism and World War II who stir up world peace and set up peoples, races, religions and ideologies up against each other to gain an easy buck on the expense of others. Send in the US cavalry, now, and this time without any hubers. The motherland of the two hubers, or hoovers, that betrayed the American people killed US presidents, robbed the American people blind, put them in a war, robbed them with the Bank of International Settlements and the Federal Reserve, and had fire over the world. This is the motherland of the Templars, Octagon base of all evil. Stand up Americans and open your eyes. I'll be with you. It's time to stand up. I give you all the proofs and all the facts. So now do it. Every time a genocide takes place, the Templars, their aristocracy of the Per A and Switzerland and their banks have their dirty little fingers in it. And another one on the list of Swiss mass murderers from Octagon was General Custer, also called the Squaw Killer and murderer of little Native American children, which is a Swiss speciality to attack and terrorize the defenseless as they and the Swiss Nazi Templars organized during World War II and even on the Germans and their children during the Thirty Year War. So here you can see the obelisk at his grave. Wow, only a pharaoh gets an obelisk on his grave. And he's from the motherland of Octagon, the base of the pharaohs in the Alps. Octagon waits their chance and then they do it again and again and let out their natural born hatred towards humanity and mostly on the children. The name Custer, it's not English, it comes out of German and is originally written with a K and a U with two dots on it. And watch the word Palatine here, I'll come back to that later. So this here is in uh, Wikipedia about Custer. There it is. So this here is from Wikipedia and you can see he is uh, buried his tomb is in uh, West Point where the obelisk is he got an important place because he's a pharaoh a pharaoh from the base of Switzerland so do know Indians Native Americans my brothers that it's not the average white man who did this they did it with us too you know it's pharaonic and it's Switzerland you got Swiss cheese you got that Look how innocent these Swissies always look. It's amazing. Oh, there's, there's no, there's no emotion on his face. Like you know, that's that's how they are. There is again, innocent Swiss face. That's that's. No wrinkles, it's n no emotion, it's like there's nobody in there. The German name Küster is the name for a church servant, 
whose task it is to light the candles, open and close the church doors, prepare the books, Bibles and songs, ring the bells, etc. It derives from the Latin name Kostos. In the Old Testament, they were called the Levites in the synagogue. So, you can read it if you want to this. I could only found it, find it in German, of course. So here you can see a map of Germany where the name Kuster or Kuster, like in general Kuster, is uh, concentrated a lot. And it's here. This is the Palatine. And from here, they went to England and afterwards to the uh, United States. So this here is Switzerland. Here's Basel. Here's the north of Switzerland. Here. And after the 30-year war, which ended in 1648, they settled down all over southern Germany. Uh, because two-thirds of the Germans were dead and murdered by the Swiss mercenaries. And this place here is Alsace, which was completely emptied. 95% of the population, the gallo romanic population, they got murdered by the Swiss. And then they went further north. Well, of course, they stayed here as well. And they went further north into the Palatine. And this is where General Custer's ancestors came from. So... You know, um, yeah. So he was not English, he was not Irish, he was not Norwegian or Italian. It was German. And he came from Switzerland originally, uh, from Octagon. So that's where he came from, the mass murderers and the squaw killer. The squaw killer's ancestors, Paulus und Gertrude Küster, came to the US in 1693 and just after the 30 year war from the German Palatine Rhineland in southern Germany. But they were not German but Swiss. As the Swiss mercenaries murdered two thirds of the German population during the 30 year war and massively settled down in southern Germany and Alsace where 95% of the original population got Swiss cheesed. So the Thirty Year War and the enormous genocide on the German people ended in 1648. Then Custer's Swiss ancestors settled down in Alsace, just as Obama's Swiss ancestry. Obama's ancestry took the same route. Then they went to Germany and f only 45 years later were in the US, where the Swissies went for the key positions as usual and just as General Custer Octagon rules over Pentagon and uh, it might be very well that Obama's ancestors they are related with Custer's ancestors. It's one big family anyway, you know. One big evil pharaonic octagon family it is. Let's say Switzerland. A few came to Germany from Switzerland. Well I tell you it was not a few. There was many. Yeah, about the Palatines. And here it says, there's a lot of the, the Palatines, they went to England. Here it says, arrival in England. And I give you some examples of that, of, you know, today's examples. And, uh, well, after that, they went into the United States. And uh, it says, migration to New York. Oh, well. Look it up in uh, Wikipedia. Even a Rockefeller, he's from the Palatines. There you go. Nice, eh? So here's some more Swiss who Custers or Custer who came from um, over the Palatines into England and then made it to the US. Well, here you see an octagonal statue there. It's in Manchester. Somebody go and have a look. Maybe uh, we are changed Manchester. Have a look where the Custers are from Switzerland. So, these are Swiss sleeper agents from Octagon. They even bring their Octagon symbols with them. See, this is today. This was, it's only half a year ago, in October 2013. There you go. Yeah. 
There's an article in the Union Leader, <clears throat> yeah, in Manchester, about the Custers from Switzerland over the Palatines. They're not German. And that says again, notable Palatines. Rockefeller, he's the uh, progenitor of the Rockefeller family. You know, they're Swissy, I told you. It's all Swissies. And of course, it's a banker, a Swiss banker, who doesn't give a damn about the Americans, does he now? What did he do against Black Tuesday in 1929? Well, he probably conspired together with the Swiss president, Herbert Hoover, and gay Ed Edgar Hoover, or Hoover, and Eisenhower. Wakey, wakey, people. The genocide on the Native Americans was a Swiss idea, as usual. This is Octogon. So, my dear Native American brothers, don't blame all the whiteys on it. Because, like this, you won't get the real perpetrators of the genocide. So, here it says the Cheyenne, nicknamed Costa the Squaw, squaw Killer. I. You know, maybe the Native Americans are not the easiest people to, to go to come around with, you know. But uh, I don't think they're liars. They're not. That's why they... I think they, they, they'll tell you what they think. There it says, they nicknamed Costa the Squaw Killer and the Baby Killer. Yeah, it says, who did that? Well, the Cheyenne did. That says, the Cheyenne. I think that's the truth. I mean, they already did it with the Germans. You know, 30-year war. Then they went to England, from the Palatine, from Switzerland, and into the US. And did it again, and they do it again. Then they did it with the Jews. Second World War. It's the same octagon. Oh, there you go again. The mass murderer, Costa. He's not a hero at all, you know. Octagon, they celebrate their own heroes, you know, but they're not our heroes, are they now? The heroes of the pharaohs. Charming fellows, eh? So here's some more about the, the Squaw Killer from Octagon, bringing shame upon America. And the legacy of Octagon continues to this very day as we can witness in this YouTube channel here called CostaWest.org. where Swiss Custer and his Swiss genocidal soldiers get celebrated as heroes. Frank Braun from Bern, Switzerland, John King from Basel, John Latman from Zur Zurich, Robert Zen from Bern, Vincent Charles from Luzern, Frederick Lehmann from Bern, and the rest of the Swiss killers and mass murderers, all from Switzerland, just as many of the SS were from Switzerland. And you can see it's from 2010, or almost, well, almost 2011. This is today. It still lives, it still lives on here in Switzerland. They honor like Mr. Custer, the, the, the squaw killer, here in Switzerland. This is Octagon. And you can see, uploaded in 2010. You're not forgotten. Well, nice, isn't it? Well, they don't forget it here. They love these sort of things in Switzerland. Look, the guy even has a website uh, honoring the score killer. And guess where Mr. David Cornut, or Cornu, of the website and YouTube channel is from? <laughs> yes, Switzerland, of course. 
paying a tribute to his fellow countrymen, whom he calls the Swiss heroes at the Little Big Horn, who committed genocide and mass murder in the name of the USA under the US flag, loading these crimes and shame of Switzerland upon the people of America. Well, don't they look alike? Well, this is Mr. David Cornut from what? Well, let's stress on the word nut, Mr. Cornut from Switzerland. And don't you think they look alike, Mr. Custer and Mr. Cornut? Well, it's both names start with a C as well. Well, and here he is, Mr. David Cornut. Also in 2010, uh, he, they say he's a special reporter for human rights. Well, don't make me laugh. In, uh, so he's talking here for the United Nations in, uh, in the motherland, of course, Switzerland. Which, I mean, the UN is a scam anyway, you know. It's a spy organization for, um, uh, for Octagon. How can they let a guy like this talk for the United Nations and discuss human rights issues? How can they do this? I mean, this this is this is really horrible. This is shocking. I mean, go and look at his at his video here, a tribute to Swiss soldiers in the U.S. Seventh Cavalry, eighteen seventy six. He says it each morning after the réveil of the regiment. I pray for her. Well, who's her? Well, Switzerland, of course. They call it here Die Schweiz, uh, the Sisters of Isis. That's what he's praying for, the Swissy. And the Swissy goes on talking about the Swiss sleeper agents within the US saying, because you never leave Switzerland. You just bring her along. Wherever I go, in life and in death, my soul will always be here. Saying literally that a Swiss soul will always be in Octagon, Switzerland, even when living in the US for hundreds of years. Well, here you got it. Definition of a Swiss sleeper agent, like J. Edgar Hoover, President Herbert Hoover, General Eisenhower, General Custer, and millions of others just living next door. The Swiss he also says that the Swiss will never really leave Switzerland and bring Switzerland with him on it or her. Without, wherever he goes, meaning they'll never integrate and keep conspiring against the world inside their secret Swiss lodges and organizations. At the moment, Obama is throwing one general or admiral after the other out of office. Is he throwing octagon sleeper agents out or is it the other way around? Clean cut Switzerland, and remember, the big deceiver tries to appear as innocent, clean, and neutral. François Genoux from Switzerland was another great eminence from Octogon, who got introduced to Adolf Hitler in 1932 as being the next generation of Octogon's Nazi bankers, and that's what he did for the rest of his life. And as many high-ranking Nazis did, when their miserable lives didn't make any more sense to him, he committed suicide, just as Himmler, Goebbels, Goering, and the rest of them. So in 1996 he invited some friends and organized a goodbye farewell party, where one of the numerous Swiss companies specialized in departures from earth earthly life took care of the rest. Yes. In Switzerland, euthanasia is uh, legal for humans who are tired of life, thus attracting numerous euthanasia tourists from all over the world. Just another Swiss business branch. I guess any normal person would be tired of living too, if he had all the terrible things on his conscience which uh, Mr. Genoux inflicted upon the world. 
Now you can read some more about the fella. Now this is Octagon. And uh, they get the total protection of the Swiss Nazi Justice Department and the entire Swiss population. I tell you. All his life he stayed an admirer of Adolf Hitler and he also was a close friend of the Nazi Amin al-Husseini who combined Nazism with Islam. And here we can see uh, both his friends of the Swiss uh, great eminence um, Genoux, François Genoux, Al-Husseini and Hitler. He knew them both personally. François Genoux from Switzerland ruled and controlled over the Nazi gold after the war, with which he financed numerous terror groups and he always had the full support of the Swiss people and never had to fear the Swiss judiciary. So, there you go, we some more, just bunch boss. So this is the Grey Eminence, and now there are others, we don't even know their names. There are thousands of Swissies who do these sort of things. And they are behind the, uh, the attacks in, um, in, in Russia, and they also did 9-11. The, the 9 11 scam, you know. The Nazis of Switzerland won the war and they're still doing it. Uh, this is what Himmler wrote. Seiner Eminenz den Großmufti zur Erinnerung in 1943, in memory of the, uh, the Al, Al Husseini. Believe me, Swiss Octogon is behind all terror attacks, including 9-11 and the recent terror attacks in Volgograd, Russia. Octogon's Thousand Year Reich. Here's another mass murderer from Switzerland. SS Standartenführer. Karl Jäger from the Einsatzkommando 3A. There we can see he's Swiss. He was born in Schaffhausen in Switzerland. He was in the SS. He was a colonel. A really evil one. They breed some nice people in Switzerland, don't they now? This Swiss colonel from Schaffhausen, Switzerland, is responsible for the murder of 137,346 people in Lithuania, whom he and his man all personally shot manually or stabbed to death with a bayonet during World War II in Lithuania. It's interesting to see how he uh, joined the, uh, the Nazis in the same year as Mr. Hitler was financed in Zurich, Switzerland in 1923. So this is in Wikipedia. You can all look it up yourself. And this Swiss personally saw to it that 34,464 children got murdered and shot a lot of them himself. And because he was so proud of his achievement, he kept book of every one of these murders on defenseless civilians and innocent children in the horrifying Jäger report. As the Swiss loved bureaucracy and paperwork and he wanted to show Hitler and Himmler of his work so he could be praised, be an important man and get up the ladder. So here's the Swiss report in Wikipedia. It's all in here. Uh, keeping track how many people, how many children he murdered. Charming Swiss, eh? 
You can read some more about in English about the, the Swiss Jaeger report, which of course went to Switzerland, the motherland. There's too much evidence, you know, that Hitler got financed in Switzerland in 1923. This guy, he joined the Nazis the same year, very same year. Of course this report went to Switzerland. And they had, a, they had a toast on it, probably. Yes, we Swiss, we are so superior to all the other people and other races. They're still showing it today. Yeah. Look at what's going on in this country. And for this, the Swiss... Karl Jäger, which means the hunter in German, where well, we can see what he hunted. He carried out the murder of 34,464 children, lined them up in front of a huge grave or pit in the sand, let them suffer in the cold where they were shaking out of fear and cold. 34,464 pairs of children's eyes begging for help and then punch a few rounds in their skulls. Can you imagine? Can you imagine witnessing the brutal murder of murder of 340,464 children? Well, this is the type of people Switzerland produces. And if they get the chance, they all want to do this again. When circumstances cir circumstances set the conditions in place and when the majority around says that it's okay to do so. This is how the Swissies function. Just as the Swiss mindset is ready to do it again today with immigrants, because the majority agrees to do so, they're just waiting for the big moment. And when in 1959, in his cell, the Swiss Karl Jäger was not so tough anymore, complaining about the prison condi conditions which he was in, he committed suicide as this time his own life was concerned and there was nothing to laugh about anymore. The Swiss are hard and mean on others, but very weak to themselves. Just as they're constantly stressing on immigrants to integrate, whereas they themselves, the Swiss, can't even integrate themselves into Europe. The Swissies feel so sorry for themselves, endlessly complain about nothing, and are extremely ruthless with others. Just as a paranoid dog with its tail constantly in between its legs. Or like a pack of hyenas who show the same pattern with the tail in between its hind legs also female dominated and also in a totally ruthless society. Thus leading to Ptolemy's famous words that not lions are dangerous but hyenas are. Ptolemy was the brother of Cleopatra of the pharaohs in the matriarchal and ruthless pharaonic civilization comparable to the base of evil in the Alps referring to the patriarchal lions coming single whereas hyenas come in highly organized packs just as the SS for ISIS and the police do. And the time will come that the Swissies have to explain how they financed Adolf Hitler and the rest. They will all say simultaneously that nobody knew whereas in fact the opposite is true. The Einsatztruppen manually killed one million defenseless people and children just next to a huge pit in the sand and nobody knew. Well, that's what the Swissies always say, that they didn't know. Thanks to the United States First Amendment law of free speech, we have come into a new era with internet, YouTube, more transparency and the possibility for average citizens to express and publish 
valuable information for mankind. Like the important information 70 years after World War II that Adolf Hitler died in Argentina on February 13th, uh, 1962 at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, to which I will add my own research focusing on Octogon, the Pharaohs, Templars, the Pharaohistocracy, and the Swiss connection. So, just punch pause. So, punch in Hitler in Argentina yourself to find more evidence because here I will just try to fit it into the historical, geographical and ethnical context related to the motherland of evil and base of the Pharaonic Templars of Octagon. See my videos The Pharaoh Show, Octagon, The Empire of Darkness, Pharaohistocracy and the rest so I don't have to repeat the basics for total explanation. So here you can see the typical nose of uh, Mr. Hitler. I mean, this is the most typical thing in his um, in his uh, f physiognomy. And uh, um, actually, I know a, a guy, a Swiss guy, who came from Argentina and who has exactly the same nose. He's a very dangerous guy working for the Swiss police spying on people and lying and he has exactly the same nose like the middle part is like more like retracted inside and it's the outer part like uh, coming over and more forwarded so well this is him My same nose I know now through my own experiences in Octagon Switzerland that the Swiss hate transparency free speech youtube and the internet just as evil never like to be looked into its cards and the swiss strike back hard on anyone who dares to criticize switzerland and uh, and reveal their horrendous octagon nazi templar organization by using terror torture and multiple assassinations by the Swiss Nazi police and their Nazi Justice Department. There are eyewitnesses and proofs now that Hitler lived on almost 20 years after 1945 and died at the age of 73 in 1962 Argentina at the land of the SS, Prince of Darkness of the Pharistocracy, Prince Bernhard zur Lippe Bisterfelde. The guy who founded the secret Bilderbergers and who had studied in Lausanne, Switzerland, in the motherland. I told you in one of my other videos what Bilderberg actually means. You know, Bild, well this guy is German actually, and Bild is a German word for a picture. And Berg, well it means mountain, so this means mountains of pictures. Like in, um, in Auschwitz, in the concentration camps. And remember, this guy was an SS. Once an SS, always an SS. So I explained it in one of my other pic uh, videos then. So, mountains of pictures of all the destroyed lives. As we can see, you know, on the videos. Uh, mountains of shoes, mountains of glasses. And also mountains of pictures. So, uh, this guy, he married with the uh, fair aristocracy of the Netherlands. And um, considering the word Bilderberg, the, the mountains, well, there are no mountains in the flat country of the Netherlands. The name says it all, Netherlands, the low countries. So it's a funny name for a low country, you know, there are, there's no mountain at all. Um, you must be glad that you are like in this country, like uh, over the water and not below the water, sort of. And Bild, it's a German name, so it has nothing to do with that country at all. I mean, the name doesn't fit in the Low Countries. It's German and it's mountains. Well, it, I mean, the Bilderbergs, it's all related to the Second World War. And so was this guy here, an SS. And Hitler died apparently on his land in Argentina. Bilderbergs, remember that. Mountains of... 
pictures as we can see in the videos. So one shouldn't look at Argentina, Uruguay and Paraguay as some dark-skinned Latin countries full of Latinos, native Indians and Mestizos. Oh no, this is European, with places like Colonia Suiza and Nueva Helvetia, who look like being in Switzerland where everyone states Swiss in their minds and deeds, their most dreadful deeds. So here you can see the son of the SS Prince of Darkness, who uh, founded the, um, the Bilderbergs. He's a king now. And he married, of course, a woman from Argentina, where they have land. And where Mr. Hitler lived until 1962. Isn't it charming? And look at her nose, the Argentinian queen. There could be some Hitler genes in there, and the ears as well. They look like Hitler's ears. We don't know what's happening, folks. So her father was a minister under the uh, dictatorship from 1976 to 1981 in Argentina, where roughly 30,000 people got tortured and just disappeared. So it's it's just you know it's a Swiss connection you know it's the Nazi connection. Yeah. Well, she doesn't look very South American, does she? <laughs> yeah. So her father was Jorge Zorregueta. I hope I pronounced it all right. So there's some bit of the story. So these are our world leaders, and this is why the uh, all these Nazis could make it to Argentina because of the Swiss connection. The same ones who finance Adolf Hitler. And where all the money went to, and where they have the uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Swiss descendants. Oh. Yes, these pharaohs from Switzerland had it all organized from beginning to end, and even after the end, together with the rest of the fair aristocracy, as this SS Prince of Darkness who hit the war out with the rest of his fair aristocratic pals in palaces throughout England, and Prince SS Bernhard of the Pharaonic SS for Isis the Goddess always smiled to the people and telling everyone what they wanted to hear, thinking by himself, once an SS, always an SS, like once a Swissy, always a Swissy. Just as the Swiss General Eisenhower of Swiss descent told everyone what they liked to hear, like repeating over and over again how he hated the Germans after having seen the concentration camps, as if it were a total surprise to him. The five-star General Eisenhower and chief of all the Allied forces who knew for years about the mass murders going on in there in the Swiss-financed concentration camps and returned and refused to bomb the railways to Auschwitz. Let's judge this Swiss sleeper agent by his deeds and not by his words because politicians always lie and therefore he could become America's next president in 1952 for the next eight years stirring us all up against the communists and Russians during the Cold War which really set off under Eisenhower. It didn't even last one year after this Swissy quit the US Army as a general to become US president as smooth as if it were meant to be and in fact it was. It's like with building number 7 of the 9-11 scam that wasn't even hit by a plane and just fell down all by itself and therefore by evidence got pulled by demolition. So if they did one, they did them all. The same thing can be said about the Nazis' exfiltration to Argentina when Mengele, Eichmann, Priebke, all here on the, on the picture and thousands of others went there, then Adolf most, like, most likely took the same route 
as his evil comrades did. Hitler got finance from 1923 on in Zurich. Here we can see him in Zurich in 1923. In Zurich, Switzerland, being the reason that Hitler never attacked Switzerland and even took their orders throughout the entire war. So I'll see my other videos about it. I don't want to repeat it all. And again, it was Switzerland that shipped Hitler and all those Nazis with Swiss Red Cross passes to Argentina. So Switzerland financed Adolf Hitler in 1923. They ordered him. They won the war. Switzerland got never attacked, curiously. Uh, they took the gold, they took all the, the wealth, and then they shipped them all out to Argentina. So, how come? And they prolonged the Second World War with two years. And the rest. So how come this country is still walking free? How come? How come Argentina let this all happen? Well, that's very easy. At least 3 million Germans live in Argentina in provinces of the highland like in Cordoba province and Patagonia where there's snow and mountains perfectly looking like Europe or even worse like Switzerland. Here you can see it looks like this place here looks like Switzerland. That's where they're hiding. Look at it. it looks like Switzerland in the Alps. This is how they made that possible. And they already had it ready in 1923 when they financed this evil man in 1923 in, in, in Zurich. Probably already showed him a picture where he was going to go to finally. Yeah, I'll show you some more pictures. You think this is in Switzerland? You know, same climate? No, it isn't. It's in Argentina, in South America. Look. And they're getting careless. They put it on the internet. Now, this is how they welcomed their man, their Swiss agent, Mr. Hitler. Look. Looks like the Alps, doesn't it? The Swiss colony, it says in, in Spanish. So this is the Swiss colony. Hey Swissies, you know what you did. So you can read it here in Wikipedia. 44,000 Swiss emigrated to Argentina. Well, there's probably more. Can you imagine how many there are? Here it says Swiss Argentine. And uh, they even have presidents. I think Nestor Kirchner, he's a president. He was the uh, president of Argentina. No, and there are three, at least 300,000 Swissies in Argentina. I told you, they, they go for the, the key positions. And then they, they make their Swiss dictatorship all over. Yeah. You, you thought that, that, that was in Switzerland? Right? Swiss colony in Mendoza. So now there are at least 300,000 Swiss who live in uh, Argentina and who never integrated and went for all the key positions within Argentina thus enabling the import of about 60,000 Nazi war criminals by Switzerland leading to the Argentinian dictatorship and terror of the other and the non-Swiss people of Argentina in the 60s and the 70s we just saw how they how they how they go for the key positions immediately and with three hundred thousand people at least well, you can lame the whole country and, and, and rule it. So here you can see some more. Well the internet is full of it. It's called even there's a there's a, a colony of Suiza in Uruguay. Uruguay. Well that's also one of those uh, one of those countries. I think Eichmann and Mengele, they, they went there. You know, they, they, like, they traveled like uh, in between Uruguay, Paraguay and Argentina. They even call it the European enclave. 
and New Helvetia. Well, we can see here they never integrated. The, the, the Swiss, they, they, they talk about integrating immigrants in Switzerland, but they don't even want to, immigrate, to, to integrate them, you know. They just want them to obey and to spread terror. And, um, well, these people never integrate. So this is how they made it possible. That all those Nazis came in Argentina. They had it all set in place already in 1923. It says 150 years. So they were working on it for 150 years. 100 years before or 80 years before Mr. Hitler came in Zurich. They were already organizing this, these things, you know. Because the, uh, and, and well, they, well, they just jump further on, on, on to a new country in a new place. After they dominated Europe and killed so many Germans and, and all these wars by the Swiss Templars and the, the Swiss mercenaries, they just went on. They went to the USA, they went to Argentina and Uruguay and they went all over. They want to dominate the whole world. Well, they do. With their banks and everything. They do. Don't be mistaken. And as the Swiss re-inhabited large parts of southern Germany after the 30 year war from 1618 to 1648. After Swiss mercenaries under Templar's command murdered two thirds of the entire German population. It must be assumed therefore that all these 60,000 Nazi war criminals were who went to Argentina were in reality Swiss sleeper agents from 35th, 350 years back pretending to be German and setting up the German people in this terrible Nazi dictatorship by Octogon. The Swiss never act before they're sure to win and have it all set in place. Just as they told their man Adolf Hitler in Zurich 1923 and that they would exfiltrate him just in time before the Russians would come to Berlin. Martin Bormann, who gave the Octagon Eagle's Nest to Hitler as a token of friendship from Switzerland, the motherland, probably also made it to New Switzerland in South America. So. Swiss Argentine, yeah, Nestor Kirchner. He's on the Swiss list, together with his sister and the rest. 300,000 of them, or probably more, more, probably more likely 3 million. Well, there you go, the Swissy. Uh, his father is Swiss German, or was, and his mother of Croatian descent. Probably one of the Ustasha Nazis. Well, you can be damn sure of that. So, Nazi from, Nazi from both sides. Well, that's why he protected the, uh, the Croatian and German Nazis. That's what he did. So, here you can see Nestor Kirchner again in his uh, typical uh, Swiss octagon Nazi Templar outfit. So, here we can see the Swissy again. He's on the Swiss list, as we just saw before. He was into, he died 2010, he was the Argentine president from 2003 to until 2007, I think it was. Here we can see him together with his wife, who's president now, also Kirchner. Look at the Swiss cross he's having there, look. Having the white cross of Switzerland. I mean... The Kirchners, they're ruling Argentina. The Swiss rule Argentina. And of course they had all these Nazi war criminals come into Argentina. And there he is again, Mr. Kirchner from Switzerland. So this is the Swiss connection. Just as Huber, Huber 1 and 2, Eisenhower, Hitler, they're all Swiss. It's all octagon. Of course he's into money laundering and, and this guy, uh, because he's Swiss, you know, they cannot do anything else. They steal and lie, money business with the motherland, Nazis, Nazism, Templar stuff, that's all the Swissies can do. 
So this is why all these Nazi war criminals went to Argentina. There's no other reason. Wakey, wakey. Yes, the Swiss rule Argentina. And they had all these Nazis come to Argentina. Included Adolf Hitler, Mr. Wolf. And here's some more, you know, just promising things like uh, having a trial, you know, for the criminals, uh, Nazi criminals in, in the, 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 the Argentinian dictatorship. Well, of course, you didn't do a thing. So when his uh, when he died 2010, then his wife became the president. You know the Kirchners and the Swissies. Kirch that means a church, like Mr. Churchill, another pharaoh. Yeah, while well, they the Swissies rule Argentina and uh, protect the Nazis, just as they rule the U.S. and Germany. And there's his wife, today's Argentine's president. Well, we can see how people think about these people. And there's his sister of Kirchner, another Swissy, also in politics. Probably become, she probably will become next president. They do money laundering, tax evasion, they bring it all to the motherland. And, uh, well, they're never inter really integrated. All pharaohs and sisters of Isis of the motherland, Octogon. And there's another Swissy. Hermes Binna. And he went into politics as well. They all go for the key positions, as I told you. Let's have a look. Well, there he is, Swiss Hermes Binner. Oh, he's a governor. He's just going to politics, pretending to be socialist, pretending to be this. But I tell you, they're all right wingers, the Swiss are. And as the Teutonic name Adolf means Adliger Wolf or Noble Wolf, he apparently possessed a private airplane in Argentina calling, called Flying Wolf and a boat called Seewolf or Sea Wolf. And in the 20s and 30s in Germany, his codename was Mr. Wolf, as his friends like the Wagner family used to call him. And when he was spying on German nationalists from 1918 to 1920 for the German army and the German police, Mr. Wolf has always betrayed the German people because he was working for the Swiss and their octagon. So, you can read the rest. The name Uruguay, this is where Mengele went to and the other guy Eichmann, uh, the name Uruguay comes from the Swiss canton Uri, being one of the three founding cantons of the year 1291. And uh, look at the, uh, the Apis bull, eh? And look at the sun showing at Argentina's flag, which are together with Uri's Apis bull, very important symbols for the pharaohs. And think of Hugo Boss, who developed and produced uniforms for the SS and the Nazis. And today shows fashion at Paris, it's haute couture, showing skinnies at fashion shows in all the big capitals, of the world, New York, Rome, London. Where the uh, skinnies most probably remind them of the concentration camps to bring back good memories to the still around Nazis making Hugo, I'm sorry, huge business today. Still anyone believes the Nazis lost the war then? Germany, yes, the Germans lost the war, but not the Nazis, and most not, certainly not Switzerland. 
Look what happened and watch for yourself that Switzerland is the only country in Europe that won the war. And today we're probably in the year 68 of the thousand year Reich, counting from 1945 on. With all the information and proofs we have now, we must act now and feel in our hearts as if we were back in 1945, because they will do it again and even worse to come. Octogon and the Swiss always change their names when they come and infiltrate another country, as the Hoovers did changing their names into Hoover, as US President Herbert Hoover and FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, better known as Gay Edgar Hoover, as General Eisenhower, as General Custer, whose real name was Custer with a K, and many, many others. The very same thing the Swissies did in South Africa, this time not anglifying their names, but making them sound Dutch, just as the Boer names. Well, here you can see uh, how the, these names, they are definitely not Swiss, or Swiss German, or whatever. They have been changed like sounding like Dutch. This is what they do. Oh, you can see some more. This is what the Swiss always do. They come and settle down in your country while keeping a low profile smile and multiply and organizing their secret lodges. Then they change their names into English or whatever then they go for the key positions in politics, army, police and justice and then they'll tell you what to do in your country while robbing your savings with their banks. And uh, well, here we can see some more. This is what they always did and it worked out pretty well. Now being the richest country in the world and always made sure that all the wars happened elsewhere. The Swiss themselves call them the Swiss community abroad or in German OAS Organisation der Auslandsschweizer and even refer to them as the fifth Switzerland just as a fifth column which is the international expression for sleeper agents, to which Wikipedia refers to as a group of people who undermine a larger group, such as a nation or a besieged city from within. So here you can read some more about this. Let's see it. Even an address and a telephone number. And here you can see it's the fifth Switzerland. That's how they call the Swissies abroad. This is a fifth column, folks. The Swiss sleeper agents. They even say it themselves. Uh, they're very dangerous. This is Octogon. There's no doubt that the word fifth column finds its origins here and not in Spain during the Civil War or something though of course the Spanish people were betrayed all the time by Octagon Templar agents and attacked by the Nazi Templar Condor Legion so here you can see in, uh, in Wikipedia so fifth column or fifth Switzerland is a group of people who undermine a larger group such as a nation or a besieged city from uh, within. 
So here you can read it all. This is how they Octagon conquers the world from within, the enemy within. Now why fifth as in fifth column or fifth Switzerland? Because there are four Switzerlands inside Octagon. One German speaking part in order to undermine the peoples to the north, one French to the west, one Italian for the south, and one retro-romantic or Romanche language. So here we can see the green where they speak French. Well, this is the only part of Switzerland where they have an independence movement. It's called Jura, because after the it's looked like a rough. You know, it's outside of Switzerland. And uh, here, the most part, well, they speak German. And here they speak Italian. And this here, it's called Romance. It might be an old Roman language of the Rome of former Roman legionnaires. Who settled down here as the Swiss have been murdering and killing people all over always and we can see it looks like a uh, it looks like a pig here's the mouth here's the tail a little dirty pig it is and uh, so these ones here you know they undermine the people to the south and here they can go to the west and here they go to the north because they speak German and all these cantons you can, you'll find well 80% of the names in the um, in the phone book are German or at least 50 well, in the French speaking part even in, in Geneva which is here you find them all German names and here as well a lot of German names and here in the Romance part as well and the Italian speaking Swiss well they're, they're not at all like the Italians I tell you they look down upon the Italians and the French speaking Swiss well it's the same they look down upon the upon the French workers who come every day to work in Switzerland so this is why and then there's the uh, so here are four languages four we could say four Switzerlands and the fifth Switzerland well now we know the fifth column and so the fifth Switzerland or fifth column is to undermine any other country and language of preference. So here you can see the fifth column in the US. Well, we are in the thousand year Reich. Just think of Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover, Eisenhower. Well, they're all Swissies taking key positions in America. I don't think they're gone. Don't you think they're gone? Here's your Nazi fifth column. And they're still in power. This is Octagon of Switzerland. And here you can see the uh, travel publicity of Swiss Coop Vesica Pites uh, supermarket. There you go. About some traveling in Costa Rica. So it's about Swiss territories in Costa Rica, which they call Pequeña Helvetia, or Little Switzerland, just as in Argentina, where Hitler went to. So this is how they attract some more Swiss fifth columns to come and live here. It's really appalling. So here it says again, they call it the Switzerland of the, uh, the middle of Central America. It's already their territory. They, it's like the fifth Switzerland. They just take it over. Here's some more fifth column. Well, why do you think there's the Templar V behind of Octagon? Eh? So this is a clothing company. Well, they know exactly what they're doing, I'll tell you. Just making business. Well, the Nazis went into business afterwards. And then if you buy it, you're carrying... Their strategy on your t-shirt, on your breast, on your back. Isn't that funny? Funny enough, the Swiss OAS reminds us of the French OAS, meaning Organisation Armée Secrète, meaning the organization of the secret army during the Algeria war, who even tried to kill General de Gaulle. 
Well, we know that François Genou, the grey eminence of Octagon, he had a lot of things to do with the OS, Organisation Armée Secrète, in uh, Algeria. So there is a connection. Don't worry. So here you go. It's about the Algerian War. OAS, the Secret Army Organisation. And François Junot, Jan Machart, Hitler's banker, Alan Dulles, all funny people. And it was a Freemasonry organization together with um, uh, François Mitterrand. And uh, de Gaulle, he wanted to give the independence to Algeria and this organization opposed to that. So OAS, do you think it's a coincidence really that the name OAS has the same letters as the, it's the same abbreviation as the organization of the Swiss fifth column, the organization of the Swiss community. No, it's not. It's all Swiss. Yalma Schacht, he was the head of the, the Bank of International Settlements, through which they stole the American savings of the uh, Black Tuesday, the Wall, Wall Street crash. We got Genou. Alan Dulles, he was all the time in Geneva during the war, the head of the, uh, the OSS. <laughs> it's all SS, OSS. You know. It's all Octagon. Don't be worried. It's all Octagon. It's all Swiss related. It's the fifth column. They're ruling the US. They're ruling the whole world. Wakey, wakey. And for their fifth Switzerland column, they have the ASR, the Ausland Schweizer Rat, or Swiss Abroad Board, inside the Swiss government to provide assistance to their fifth column of Swiss sleeper agents of Octagon all over the world. So here we can see those who can read German. It says the fifth, the fifth Switzerland, their fifth column. These are like secret lodges. We don't know what's going on. So this is in German. So here you can listen to the Swiss mayor of uh, Cape Town. He's speaking Swissy language. Ich bin Geschäftsmann, bin aber auch in der lokalen Politik tätig. Von 1987 bis 1989 bin ich Stadtpräsident Bürgermeister von dieser Stadt. Gewesen. Ich werde jetzt Ihnen ein bisschen etwas von meiner Stadt zeigen. So he says, it's my town, and he was the mayor. Oh, nice, eh? <laughs> so here's some more of these guys here, if you fancy reading it. So this guy here, Peter Muller, He's Swiss. He even speaks Swiss German. He was the mayor of Cape Town. And he's still ruling it. He calls it my town. I saw an interview. He calls it my town. My, my South Africa. <laughs> there you can read it. He even got his email there. So these are the guys. Octagon, the fifth column. These are the guys uh, Edward Snowden is really working for. Edward Snowden belongs to the Swiss fifth column. He was assigned to spy on the Swiss banks and he didn't. So now they're using him against the US. This guy is a traitor. He's very dangerous. He's extremely dangerous. And that's the fifth column. I have no doubts at all that Edward Snowden, he's of Swiss ancestry. Just look it up and find it out. Go to the uh, the Mormons. They all, they they got a register of all the people where they come from. Edward Snowden is of Swiss descent. I tell you, he's got the same, like innocent Swiss Swissy face. This is octagon. This is how they work. And today, 2014, there are 732,183 Swissies living abroad who have not entirely submerged yet and still have their original names, identities and Swiss nationality. 
who hope to get a better immigrant treatment than the immigrants do in Switzerland. Here we can see the number. It's almost a million. So these are the ones who haven't got, who are not submerged yet, but they belong to the fifth column already. So there must be, I don't know how many millions, they're all over. Oh, there you go, you can read the whole article if you like. The Swissies want to make the world their own, while when you, as a foreigner, settle inside the motherland of Octagon, you have to deal with Swiss gangster rule by a very unanimous people, like these Swiss gangsters of their Swiss Nazi police came and put three guns on my head for gangsters intimidation and no legal re reason at all. How they lie things together to put immigrants in prison and how they torture and terrorize with no end and simultaneously these 700,000 Swiss abroad get well treated and they're more than just these 700,000 I mean these are the ones who are still Swiss well, I don't know how many 20 million let's have, let's have a pick 30 million hey, you can read the whole article if you like yeah, Roger Federer it's the same Swiss South African yeah, this is interesting about the red lights. Listen what they say. Yeah. They even say, like here, the Swiss are like red lights. You find them everywhere. This is what they say about themselves, that they are, in fact, everywhere. They know it. You know, they really know it. They know exactly what they're doing. Now let's see how Octagon took over control of South Africa and had all their Swissies imported. Since the Crusades and since the founding of Switzerland on August 1st, 1291 by the Templars, the Swiss man had a tradition of serving as mercenaries for the European aristocracy of the pharaohs. Right, you can read the all here. So after the Thirty Year War in 1648 and murdering two-thirds of the German population, they went and served the Dutch king amongst other pharaohs. As the Dutch navy ended the Thirty Year War by sinking the Spanish and Portuguese galleons full of Inca gold to pay off the mercs. So immediately after in 1652, like four years after the end of the uh, Thirty Year War, uh, South Africa could be founded in 1652 by Jan van Riebeek at Cape of Good Hope. It says service in the Dutch army, modern times, all over. And in 1694, only 46 years after the Thirty Year War, 5,000 Swiss mercs served in the King's Army of the Lowlands, who were 11,200 in 1702, 20,400 in 1748, until Napoleon invaded the Netherlands in 1795. And altogether, an estimated 150,000 Swiss mercs served in the Dutch army, as the Dutch themselves were more like sailors, traders and merchants, who didn't fancy military business very much. Thus explaining who the notorious South African mercs really were, later on in history. Yes, of Swiss origin.
are not Dutch or real boars. Until today, the Swissies have an uninterrupted mercenary tradition. I mean, this is General Costa in Africa all over again. Same story. Now, here's some more about the Swiss mercs. I mean, it's still going on today. I mean, this is executive outcome of South African mercs. And the, uh, the Blackwater guy, his name is Prince. Well, now we know he's probably not Dutch, but of Dutch descent. But uh, one of those Swiss mercs who stay there or in, in, in the low countries. It's still going on today. The whole mercenary business is Swiss. It always has been Swiss and it always will be Swiss. This is Octagon. Whether it's Blackwater, Executive Outcome or all the others, it's Swiss. And all these Merck companies, they have a letterbox uh, firm in Switzerland, in Octagon. So they don't pay any taxes. Well, you don't want to pay US taxes, do you now? Or very high British taxes. Uh, yeah. So this is quite interesting. Here it says, there are known cases where the recruitment business was run by the wives. Well, these are the sisters of Isis. You know. A lot of women in it. Oh, the men they go fighting and killing and the sisters of Isaiah, well you go there and you go here. The same thing I can see here today. There's a lot of Swiss women. And uh, there, there are some real witches here, I, I can tell you. And they tell the police to go somewhere and arrest a foreigner. They say, this is a, this is a dangerous foreigner, go and arrest him. We are so afraid of him. So they manipulate the man. And this is still going on in Switzerland today. And they lie and they cheat. They're very extremely racist. They think they're better than the rest. This is going on in Switzerland today. When I go out here, there's a lot of women. If I would walk out of the house, there's a lot of women, you know, like sitting at home or, and they, uh, they just call up the police, you know, the neighbors. I don't have to go out for two minutes and I got the police running after me. This is Switzerland and here you can see it. The Swiss Mercs business was run by the women. The sisters of Isis of Switzerland. And it's all pharaonic in the end anyway. Then the Templars VOC or Dutch East India Company with their Templars V logo needed Marines and Mercs to kill the black man in the Cape area. Well the Templars VOC had a revitalizing stop so the sailors could rest for a month and take fresh vegetables and fresh meat from the farmers or boars which is a Dutch name for a farmer and Swiss German name after four months sailing from Amsterdam to Cape Town and a lot of men suffering from scurvy or lack of vitamin C and other vitamins on their voyage to the East Indies, now called Indonesia. The um, average death rate on the voyage from Amsterdam to Cape Town was 6%. And over the years, from 1610 to 1794, 1 million people sailed from the Netherlands to South Africa, and among them a whole lot of Swiss mercs, maybe up to around 150,000 men, thus explaining the tradition of South African mercs today, which we find in no other country in the entire world. So here we see the logo, the Templars logo, the Templars V, or well, why do you think they put it there, eh? Well, it was all from Switzerland in, in the first place, you know? that's why they invited the uh, after the 30 year war the Swiss Mercs didn't have anything more to do so they went to Holland because the Templars set up the fleet there it's all in the logos you know it can't be mistaken they even show it the proofs are there folks and the Templars are found at Switzerland they don't even think we're so stupid they don't even hide it well we are stupid yeah. 
That's why in the army you say kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. So, here's some more about the Dutch East India Company. Well, you can skip the Dutch, actually. They were, they were just the sailors. It's all Templar stuff. It's Swiss. It's Octagon. And these guys, and most of all the Dutch West Indi India Company, and then the English started doing it as well, they were the ones, these Templars, who brought the, uh, the African slaves to America. It's all st Templar stuff. This is the, f the Swiss fifth column. They did it. It's all multinational companies and they hide under another nationality. That's how they do it. And nobody thinks about Switzerland because it's so neutral and clean and they hide behind this nice smile. You know, but it's all Templar stuff. Well, look at the flag here. It's a Templar's V. The Templars brought the slaves to America. Listen up, my black brothers, if there's any Black Panthers listening. Well, come and contact me. We do something about it. Oh, there you go. Breaking the silence. Well, that's what I do. I break the silence. The slave roots here. The Swiss don't like me to break the silence. They'll probably come around with the police again. Or the Swiss women here. They, they, they call up the police and they're, they're, they're mercenaries, they're men. And say, well, oh, this, this foreigner, he talks bad about Switzerland. We must arrest him again. You know, that's how they do it. This is the heart of evil. It's octagon and it's pharaonic from the beginning. Now, there you go again, the Dutch West India Company. They brought the first slaves to uh, New York. Well, you saw the Templar symbol, so they're not really Dutch. And, uh, well, the, uh, the Templars, the Octagon, the Swiss Templars, they brought the, uh, they bought the slaves from the Arabs. And now I want you to think about the, uh, the Nazis and the, the Islam connection. Well, not all of Islam, but some of them. Like uh, Amin al-Husseini and uh, François Junot. So this thing, together with Octagon, the Templar Nazis, and the, um, the Islamo-slave connection, as the word for a uh, black man and a slave in Arabic is Abd. And where the word Abdullah, it means the slave of Allah. So all the black men, they were, they were slaves. Um, yeah, so here is already the connection between the, uh, uh, this, this, this face of, of the Muslims. Uh, in spite of the fact that they say, well, we're all brothers and things like that. But, you know, people now people are dying, you know, constructing the um, uh, the, the, the World Soccer Stadium in, uh, in some um, Arab uh, Emirates. They have a lot of slaves or even Muslims. And they don't get any wages. They die as flies. Today, in 2014. So, um, yeah, nice. And actually, there's a lot of propaganda, and you know, by the Nazis uh, on the internet, and um, even black people, they think that they believe this stuff that they, you know, about the Zionists and that they are the uh, the enemy of the world. Well, I don't give a rat's ass if you want to believe it, but I I do care. You miss the real enemy. This is Octagon, the Templars. This is the real enemy. And the Zionists, I tell you, my black brothers, if you want to believe all that. The Zionists stopped black slaves in Palestine because the Palestinians, Palestinians, they had a lot of black slaves or apts. So you better be thankful that the, that the Zionists, they stopped this, uh, this uh, Palestinian tradition or this Muslim tradition of having black slaves. Just think, you know, think and use your head and look at the proofs and history. It was Zionism that stopped black slavery in Palestine yeah so most of the or maybe all the um, the mercenary companies they are based in Switzerland because of the taxes so here is Eggies they are in Switzerland you can even find the address somewhere they got a letterbox company but the uh, 
the offices are in London. So Mercenary Company says Executive Outcome did send their South African mercs all over Africa and they were hired by blacks to kill other blacks. But of course the blacks in the government were and are pharaohs of the fair aristocracy who hired the Swiss South African mercs from Octagon to do the job. Well bad habits die hard, don't they now? And this is why Nelson Mandela and the new South African government never did a single thing against these white mercs from South Africa roaming over the entire African continent because Nelson Mandela came from a royal African Per A family of rulers and he was a Freemason. This is why he got invited to see the Queen or does anyone think that some average Negroid can drink tea with the Queen like that and this convict with 27 years in prison become head of state just like that. Well I tell you this guy didn't do a single day in prison and he doesn't give a damn about the black population as he himself was part of the big pharaonic family of the Per A big house and here you can see him like wearing the uh, the Templar's cross the same one as um, as, the, as the, 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 tr the slave ships of the VOC they had the Templar's V on the, in their logo who brought black slaves to the Americas so you think this guy really cares about the black population of Africa or he's part of them? No, he's not. And the Pharaoh is so proud of his Templar's cross. Even here on a, on a South African stamp. And here he's sitting with some other Pharaohs of some other Per A dynasty. I think this is Sweden or something. Now you see this here? Sometimes it's red, sometimes it's blue, you know, like the other royals. This is a sign of the symbol of the pharaohs. So you can see Mandela is of a royal Per A pharaonic family. That explains it. That he was invited by all the other royals, you know. So one of the king's sons named Mandela became Nelson Mandela's grandfather and the source of his name. Yeah. So this is in... Uh, Wikipedia. Well, here you can see Mandela. He was born into a royal family, the uh, Tembu tribe, Ikshosa. So they're all pharaohs together, you see. A royal pharaoh. Well, remember the pharaohs, they were all over Africa before they went to Europe, you know. So, yeah, this is typical pharaonic, isn't it? Yeah. So this is why the European royals are like him. You know, you can read it all here. Uh, well, find it out yourself. A pharaonic necklace. So in South Africa, the persecuted Europeans were forced to live side by side with their Swiss persecutors without knowing so. As the Swiss and the Mercs always keep tight. The real Boers are a mix of French Huguenots, German Protestants and mostly Dutch Calvinists. All of them persecuted in Europe for religious reasons and massacred during the Thirty Year War by these same Swiss Mercs, who now found themselves all together in South Africa. And this is why the Boers lost the Boer Wars against the British Army, because at every battle they got betrayed by the Swiss Mercs, who by that time spoke Afrikaans and had a Dutch sounding boar name, altogether being the second time they got betrayed by the same Swiss persecutors of the, of the fifth column from Octagon. And the third time was when Swiss de Klerk sold South Africa out to the ANC. The old bunch of Freemasons anyway. Well, de Klerk is a member of the Afrikaner Brother Bond, a Freemason organization. Yeah, there he is, de Klerk. It's 
just uh, it's still the VOC. Well, this is their logo. You see the pyramid ruling over the world. You know the pharaohs ruling over the world. It's the same sort, of, same lodge as uh, Nelson Mandela. He was part of another lodge. You know, it says "Be strong" in Afrikaans, so that means "Be strong by togetherness." You know, the Freemason. Uh, And apparently this is also the brother bond. This looks like a the uh, fleur de lis, the lotus flower of the Nile. The two S's, meaning Isis. He has a V symbol. Well, at that time the Boers had a great seer, Sinner van Rensburg, which almost sounds like Sinner van Rensburg, but he was quite the opposite and not a sinner. And uh, if the Boers would have listened to the last known prophet, then the Boers would have won the war. And the Boer women and children wouldn't have been massacred. 28,000 women and mostly children in British concentration camps of Pharaoh. As Lord Kitchener and Lord Frederick Slay Roberts of the fair aristocracy ordered this evil massacre, on defenceless children with the Duke Winston Churchill also roaming around at the same time and place adding his bit in the massacre. So this is the fair, is the fair aristocracy, Lord Kitchener, Lord Slay Roberts, they're all pharaohs or part of the big pharaonic Per A big house family for whom in fact the Swiss mercenaries always did the job for them until today if you look at Blackwater and an executive outcome I recognize how Sina saw pharaonic symbols in his visions as for him a house meant a government which relates directly with the pharaonic per a big house of rule and he sees an ox or a cow for a country which definitely relates to the Apis bull and defending and defining the country's borders. And this is by the way why in English one says sunset for nightfall, where Set or Seth is the pharaonic lord of darkness who rules the night. Sun Seth or Sunset. Well there it is again, just as Mandela. Same pharaonic sharp here as the royals. It's all the same bunch. And why do you think Paul Kruger died in Octogon, Switzerland in 1904? Clarence. He was the first president of South Africa and a Boer general. Just as Swiss General Dwight D. Eisenhower was Swiss. And why didn't Paul Kruger go to the Netherlands instead? when the Boers are supposed to be Dutch settlers. Well, because they aren't. Most of the Boers are Swiss mercs, who came out of the Dutch military service to South Africa with Octagon's Templar ships of the VOC. The Boers are not like the Dutch at all. Their English accent sounds like a Bernese from Switzerland trying to speak English. The Dutch are no racists as the Boers and the Swiss have those white superiority um, beliefs of white supremacy. The Swiss and the Boers like guns, rifles and pistols. The Dutch are more into smoking marijuana instead. And the Boers only speak some backwarded Dutch as only an immigrant from Switzerland would as a Swiss mercenary from Octagon. Even the word Boer is pronounced the exact same way as in Bernese Swiss German as where most of the Swiss mercs came from and in the 20th century we don't see any close ties between Holland and the Boers but there is between Swiss Nazis and the Boers during the apartheid era and all the crimes committed so the Boers have all the Swiss characteristics and no Dutch ones at all this is the way octagon sleeper agents hide and they are everywhere and more widespread than red lies as the Swissies 
even say themselves. And when I was in the SADF in 1981, during the border wars, they had restricted areas where they had rows of black people hanging upside down from the trees with a bucket underneath. So after a few days, some slimy, stinking substance dropped down from their noses, which they had dried in the sun and grinded into a powder, which had all the DNA information of death in it. They called it the death powder, and probably had it from Octogon, the motherland from the Sisters of Isis, or some pharaonic death cult formula. And just a little bit in the glass of a political adversary would do for a natural death. They even put it in wells and wiped out entire villages. And at this point, I decided to desert the army and South Africa forever. Now, a strange cause of destiny brought me to the motherland of evil, where prisoners as Roger Fankhauser get natural caused inside Swiss torture centers, and I recognize so clearly that this way of sneaky assassinations are so typically Swiss, as these Nazi Templars from Octagon hide all their hideous Nazi crimes against humanity behind this impregnant impenetrable Swiss smile. Well, what else can you expect from these mercenaries who sell their services to the highest bidder? Of course it was them who betrayed the real Dutch boars to have their children murdered in concentration camps of the aristocracy and their lords of darkness, just as these Swissies financed Adolf Hitler and consequently the concentration camps. Octagon is everywhere. They don't integrate, go for all key positions, organize in Swiss lodges, change their names, and then impose their laws on you and send their Octagon police to come and get you.